Hey, you guys. What's going on? Welcome to an operating system sort of review slash preview. Today, I'm going to be reviewing and previewing the beta for Microsoft Windows 10. Yes, because who needs Windows 9 anyway? So this is just kind of my run through and opinions on what is new and interesting in Windows 10. So from the desktop, it doesn't really look that much different from 8 um, at all. Okay, sorry about that. But as I was saying, this is the Windows 10 technical preview. So again, from the desktop, it doesn't really look much different from 8 or 7 for that matter. But the thing that really sets this apart from 8 is the fact that we have a start menu again. I know, it's it's about time, isn't it? So, no longer do we have that weird metro view, which you actually can still get back. Um, if you just right-click, hit properties, then go to start menu, and then just uncheck that box, it will log you out, which I'll probably show that off at the end. But yeah, sure enough, the just classic Windows desktop is back. So, or classic Windows start menu is back. So that's very cool. And then you have these live tiles on the side, much like mo mo what most of 8 was. And if you want to put an app on the side, unlike this live tile area, so for instance, I wanted finance over here. So what you do is you just, oh, sorry, messed that up. So all you have to do to get this over here, if I don't mess this up, is you go here, pin the start, and now you have a finance live tile. So you can take this, you can drag it, around wherever you want to, which is neat. Um, you'll get just stock information. You can resize it, so we can make it really small. Uh, we can make it medium. We can make it wide. And we can make it large, which will put it over here. But I'll just keep it on wide and keep it down there. So that's very cool that they have kind of found a way to balance Metro and sort of the original desktop view, which I acknowledge Microsoft for doing. And along with that, you might have noticed when I opened it up, but you can now open up Metro apps in a window. So if I did, for or for example, want news open. So I just click news, and once it decides to open, news will open in an actual window, which is extremely convenient if you don't want to run Metro apps in the large big screen Metro mode which I find very, very, very cool. So here we are. So if we wanted to use the gigantic Metro News app, we could use it in a windowed screen. Um, I don't think, oh, you just scroll off to the side and you get the rest of the information on this page, which is very, very cool. Um, along with that, they've added some, at least I believe to be new features within the file explorer. So if I just open up the file explorer really quickly, and then you select a file. So you have all these shortcut tools. So for instance, if I were to quickly delete the downloads folder, you just hit delete and it moves it up to the recycling bin. So let's see, what do I not need? I'll just create a random text file or something and put it there. So, blah, blah, blah. and file save. And now I will just save it to the home folder, I suppose. And save. I need to actually give it a name, don't I? Save. And that should be saved. What? Oh, can I not save things? Okay, I'll just save it to documents then. This must be a bug. Yes, yeah, must be a bug, but I think you get the picture. So basically, you just put something here, hit delete, it deletes it. Click this to rename things. Uh, click this for the properties of the file. And click this to open up your downloads folder. So that's pretty cool. Um, one thing that I have noticed, at least with um, the Windows 10 technical preview, is that there is a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of compatibility issues. So a lot of applications don't work properly, if at all, and a lot of things appear to be quite buggy running in this mode. But I guess it's just a beta thing that we're just going to have to get used to. 
Um, a couple of other cool features. This button here, task view. You can add desktops to win desktops to Windows finally. So for instance, for instance, if I had Chrome open here, and I click this, and I wanted to add a desktop, so I just click that to go that to that desktop, which I'll open up the file explorer in. So now I have one desktop with Chrome, and one desktop with the file explorer, which is very very neat. Um, it's useful if you are, I guess, a power user, as that's what I think this feature is kind of aimed towards. So that's that's really neat. Um, let's see. I'll show you that they've made snapping better. It's like, you know that feature in Windows 7 where you can drag to the side and it snaps it to the side? And it's very, very basic? Well, they've made it better in Windows 10. So if you want to snap something to the corner, say I want to snap something down to here. I just drag it down to the corner, and I can snap things to the corner. So if I wanted to move, ooh, that's Mission Control, that's a Mac. Um, so if I wanted to put the File Explorer here, or Windows Explorer up here, I can drag that there. That's pinned there. Uh, let's see, what other apps could I pin? Notepad, for instance. Say I was working on a note at the same time. I'll pin, the, I'll pin that there. And I'll open up Internet Explorer. Why the heck not? Ugh, Internet Explorer. And I'll pin that up to there. So now, as you can see, we have four applications running simultaneously. So if we want to go to, I don't know, let's see. Um, I don't know, just a random website. Reddit. And then we wanted to go to YouTube in here. And then we wanted to be jotting things down in here. As you can see, it all works very conveniently. So, I don't know, it's nice. It's nice. It works really, really well. Um, I'd like to acknowledge Microsoft for actually doing this. And then we can browse our file browser here. So we can go to our desktop folder. App shortcuts, or just have some app shortcuts, etc., etc. So it's very neat. It works quite well so far. Uh, close tabs, and don't save and close. But it works very nice so far. Uh, I haven't really experienced many issues with it yet. And now I guess to kind of wrap up this video, I'll show you two more of the features, and then I'll show you. Or more, yeah, well, these features are basically the same thing. And then I will show you the proper Metro Start screen is still there. So if you hit the search button, it will bring up this kind of weird search menu, which I personally don't think is the most efficient thing in the world. And it's mainly just news searches. But so, for instance, if I wanted to search for docu documents, um, the documents folder will come up. And it's, again, not the, really the most convenient way to go, but it works. However, the more convenient way to go, or more convenient way to search, in my opinion, is just using the Start Menu Search, which I've always used in Windows 7 and everything. So you just search that, click Documents, your new Documents folder. So that's very cool. And I guess finally, I will show you the classic Start Menu, or Start Screen from Windows 8. So I'll sign out and save changes. Uh, this might take a second. Ooh, okay. Okay. I thought it had a blue screen to me there for a second. Well, yeah, I am just running this in a virtual machine, so I'm not actually running this on native har hardware. It's just because I don't really... It'd scare me if it messed up anything on our computers or anything. All right, so now we're in the Windows desktop. It looks like it did about a minute ago. We hit this, and it takes you back to the Windows 8 Metro start where you have all of your standard Metro Start things. Press down to see all of your current applications, etc., etc. So that's neat. That's convenient. Um, the Metro Internet Explorer isn't there because I don't have IE set to my default browser, but everything else I think will work in full screen. So if I want to open up photos... Oh, whoa. I guess just Metro isn't really the way to go anymore. I thought it would open up photos in like the full screen view, but apparently not. But yeah, it's overall pretty cool. I like Windows 10 so far, namely because 
I was never too big on the way 8 did things. I feel like it didn't work overly conveniently. And so I feel like this is a way for it to kind of balance out that mix of people who like Windows 8 and people who absolutely hated Windows 8. I personally will, if I do, or which I will continue to use this beta, but I personally prefer using the um the Windows, the new start menu, as I find it to be far more easy to use, or far more convenient to use, I guess. It's not really easier by any means, but it is far more convenient. And so thank you, Microsoft, for finally bringing back what people knew and what people came to like about your operating system. So huge shout out to Microsoft there for doing that. Um, if you want to get the Windows 10 technical preview, you can download it off of Microsoft's website. Considering I remember to, I will try to leave a link in the description for it. If you want to download it and try it out for yourself, I would not, as this is beta software, recommend installing it over your main operating system. But if you feel like trying it out in a virtual machine or dual booting, why not? Go on ahead. It's fun. It works. It's still pretty easy to be productive with. I mean, it works perfectly snappily snappy snappily i don't know but it works really well so i say if you want to give it a go give it a go and just see if you like it or not so with, i guess i will see you all in the next video goodbye